Hello and welcome to Spirit Sherpa, the show that helps and encourages you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. If you're new to this type of work, please start with episode one. If you're an intermediate student, please start with episode 98. And if you are advanced, please start with episode 200. I'm Jules, your co-host, and with me as always to share her insight and wisdom is the spirit doctor herself, Kelly Sparta. Hello, Kelly! Hey, Jules! <laughs> How's it shake a laking? Yes. <laughs> well, I, I got up freak early this morning um, and then had people over for breakfast. Who? So this is how Panama works, okay? So we're going to talk about this. So I have been wanting to have a new photo shoot done since I've dropped so much weight. And I live in Panama now. And, you know, I just haven't had a photo shoot done in a while. So um, I... It took me a year to figure out who could actually do this from the time I started looking. And it turns out that it's a friend of mine's husband. He does excellent photos. And, you know, so we had him come to the house. Um, well, I went to their house last time, but Jeff had not gotten my soy milk for the previous two days. And so, therefore, my hot flashes were back. And so I showed up to their house, which has no air conditioning, and I had sweat through my hair. And, <laughs> and it just oh my did not stop for the entire photo shoot. I was just a sweaty mess for the whole photo shoot. And he gave me the best pictures he could give me, but they were not, you know, it was a sweaty mess, right? And so, uh, you well, know, it's a look. This time. <laughs> and, and they came to my house this time because we have air conditioning. And, um, and to make it worth their while to pack up all of his shit to come to my house, I said, well, we'll just make breakfast for you. And so Jeff made breakfast and, Aww. you know, um, so we had them over early to do breakfast before the photo shoot and then the photo shoot. And of course we're going inside and outside. And so the humidity is you, you were talking <laughs> before we got on the call, uh, on the, on the podcast you were talking about how my hair was a little more curly than usual. I'm like, yes, I was outside in the humidity because it rained last night for the, which doesn't happen very often in the dry season. And so it was like a lot of rain and then it was humid today. So, um, my hair is curly when it's humid and it's not curly when it's not. So you can always tell how humid the room was based on how curly my hair is. But the, uh, you know, the upshot is that I spent the morning, you know, going in and out of clothes and playing model and all the things. And uh, little known fact is I had wanted to be a model when I was in high school. And um, actually nice. went out to do a modeling, uh, you know, I went out on an interview or an audition or whatever the hell they call it. And uh, mm -hmm. the guy looked at me and said, your upper lip is too thin. And he found something else wrong with me and something else wrong with me. And I was like, I got back from that. And I was like, I am going to hate my body in three months if I continue down this path. I'm done. And that was it. I was like, nope, <laughs> not doing this. My cousin, on the other hand, was modeled for many, many years. So she, she did that. Mm -hmm. but I was like, nope, I'm good. I'm done. So... That is why Kelly did not become a model. There you go. Now you know why I'm a shaman. There you go. <laughs> um, I actually did yeah, modeling so I, back I back in the day it. a little bit. There you go. See. I I, so, I did. Yeah. I was I was on Mo, Mopar magazine cover girl and centerfold. So <laughs> clothed. What kind of centerfold? <laughs> <laughs> it's right. Uh, it was Mo, Mopar magazine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, Mopar magazine, and it was a winter shot, and I was, uh, I forgot what kind of car it was, but uh, if I remember the issue and all that, I'll, we'll put that in the show notes, but yeah, like, little known fact, okay. you know, I was right. about 110 pounds dripping weight back then. <laughs> I was more than that, but I w I'm, I'm much taller than you, so I was about 145, yes. <laughs> but I weigh, I'm 5'9", so you know, that was still Yeah, yeah, I'm, I was I'm like 5'3 and a half. <laughs> Yeah, my teachers were worried I was anorexic. So yeah, that's how skinny I was. So, um, which of course the modeling agency was like, okay, yeah, you're you're fine. Don't gain any weight. <laughs> you know? It's like, 
just messed up, but that's what it was back then. It was the 80s, man. So, yeah. Um, so I started my morning with a photo shoot, and uh, tomorrow a festival starts here in town that runs, or no, today. Today a festival starts here in town called the Flower and Coffee Festival. It is in town for 10 days, and our town swells in wow. size to, like, double or triple its normal size, which is significant, because we only have 25,000 people most of the time, and we end up with, like, 50, 60,000 when, when the festival is happening, which means that most people who live here don't go into town for those 10 days, because we're like, the traffic's going to be a nightmare, it's going to suck... It's going to take forever to get anywhere. A lot of the businesses are going to be closed because it's a nightmare and nobody who's local goes into town. And um, so, you know, we just, I made plans with a friend yesterday uh, who wants to go to the festival. She hasn't been to it before. And so Jeff and I and she are going to the festival on the one day that I have to go into town because I'm running karaoke that night. And so... Uh, we're going to go early so we can go do the festival and then have dinner and then I can run karaoke and then we can fight the traffic to get out. Um, but yeah, that's the plan. So, so much fun, right? Fun. <sighs> I'm hoping fun. that if we go in early enough, I'll be able to get good parking. <laughs> so, because mm -hmm. Panamanians are very late night people. So like they'll come out at like nine o'clock at night to start their evening. Nine or 10 is when they start their evening. And then they go until like five, four or five in the morning. And so I'm hoping that if we get there at like three, four o'clock, that we'll be able to get good parking. We'll walk across to the festival, be able to walk back and avoid trying to get across the bridge to get back because that's oh, so much entertainment. But they have beautiful flower displays and orchids and I mean it's amazing and they have all kinds of, of crafts that people do and they people come in from Guatemala they come up from Colombia they come up from Peru and they bring all their handcrafted wares and they're really it's really quite beautiful oh, nice so yeah so it's a it's a cluster for the town <laughs> but but you know if you're going and you're not trying to drive it's not bad so it's 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 a lovely event and, you know, there's a lot of stuff to do there. So, you know, it's fun. Um, fun. And then, yeah, so, you know, life has been very interesting. You know, I've been to two birthday parties in the last... Oh, I went to a Panamanian birthday party on... Jeff and I went um, on Tuesday. Uh, one of my friends is Panamanian, and everybody there was Panamanian okay. except for the two of us. And so the, you know, Spanish was being spoken pretty much the whole time. And we're just like, mm-hmm. We're keeping up as much as we can. You know, we're still learning. Jeff's better than I am. Um, but, you know, it was interesting to see the format of the party and how that went and what was done and how, how you know, like everybody went around the table and talked about what their connection to the birthday girl was and how they met her and what they love about her. And, and, then, um, and then there was a benediction by her pastor um her minister had come and uh did a benediction over the the party and then everybody took pictures with her in front of the happy birthday sign and next to the birthday cake and then we had cake and everybody went home so uh, there was food in there too but yeah during the okay. during the talking stage but yeah it was very now, this was for an, an adult an adult birthday yeah yep it was for an, an adult one okay <laughs> Yes. That's, yes. that's, that's neat. That's, so that's very different than our happen. birthday parties. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, and it happened to fall on Martyr's Day here, which is a, um, it's a holiday and it's actually a dry holiday. So you cannot serve alcohol at all on Martyr's Day. Um, and if, if a, restaurant is found to be serving alcohol on that day they get a fifty thousand dollar fine and if you are walking around the streets with alcohol on that day it's a five hundred dollar fine so they are dead serious about oh their my no gosh. alcohol rule in fact it starts at midnight the night of 
And so when I was running karaoke okay. on Monday night, it started on Tuesday, we actually closed the bar down a half an hour early in order to make sure that no one still had alcohol in their hands when midnight hit. Wow. That's how dead serious they are about it. Yeah. So, yeah. It, it's, it's some big stuff, right? Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. It, it was very interesting. Very cool. To, to know that. They also make um, dry days on days that they do uh, uh, election days. So you, you're not allowed to be drunk and vote. Go figure. The U.S. <laughs> never considered that. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I like that. It's just like, I don't care. You got your ID. Go do whatever the hell you want. You could be totally fucked up. Nobody cares. But yeah, here I never even considered that. <laughs> never occurred to me. But that's the deal. And I'm like, there's a lot of things Panama does right that we we don't think about. <laughs> so yeah, very interesting. Well, see, to me, that would be so common sense that you don't get drunk and then go vote. That, that, that would be common sense to me, but. Hey, I might be in the minority. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that common sense is less and less common? <laughs> yes. Oh, my God, yes. That's a yeah. whole podcast to itself. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to go there today. No. I need to be in a No, we're not. Mm -mm. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We're we going to talk about some earth energies. For, yes. Yeah, I've been partying with friends too much for the last few days that, to, to have that conversation. I am underslept. You do not want to know what I have to say about that. So, <laughs> we're going to talk about Earth energies, chakras, vortices, or vortexes, depending on how you pronounce it, and the Earth's energy grid. We're going to talk about all these things today. Um, you know, we're only 12 yes. minutes into the episode. Why the fuck not, right? <laughs> So, it's okay. Well, we well, are yeah, not going to talk, talk about that. that. That two plus two is still four. You know, no. <laughs> two plus two is still no. four. That yeah. it no. it really is. And but we're not, not going to discuss that day. That sometimes it's six. No. It's not an opinion. No, it's not an opinion. <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. We're going to have to have that conversation for a second because I was in a coaching program. I have to say this. I was in a coaching program and the woman who was running the program, I, I was saying something and I was talking about the, the, you know, the, re, the recession that people were claiming was happening soon. You know, this was a while mm -hmm. ago. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and she said, well, you know, you, you should just leave that out. And I'm like, uh, it fits perfectly with the conversation. Why are we, why are we leaving this out? And she said, well, because you know, not everybody believes in the recession. And I just, I just looked at her and I was like, how, how does one believe in a recession? A recession by definition is two quarters of down GDP. How, how does of, this, right, is, this of down is growth. defined? It is, it is, it, 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 how it's defined how do you not believe in it and she was just like well you know do, do, and, I, and she just got very defensive and i'm like it is not a belief-based structure how dare you question right? her <laughs> she, just, she was just like well fine do whatever you want blah, blah, blah. i was like mm, okay so yeah because there is no defense yeah. for that two plus two is four period right <laughs> yes but we're not talking about this okay moving on no, moving on. All right. Now, Earth. Okay, grounding. Okay, moving on. Grounding. Grounding. <laughs> and this is Don't make me do a sound healing on you. Mm. So, wow. This is going to be, wow, we are all over the place today. So, just buckle up, Buttercup, because I don't know where this shit's going. All right, here we go. <laughs> uh, It'll yeah. be an adventure. So, it will be an adventure. So okay. let's, let's talk about the earth energies. Um, you know, the, the, let me start with the energy grid because that's the, that's sort of the crucial piece, right? And when I say grid, I'm, I'm not really talking a grid, right? I'm talking about the, okay. All right. I'm uh, okay. I am talking about a grid and I'm not talking about a grid. Like I said, well, this, so there's something else that's not in the title that we need to talk about is what I'm saying. So yes, there is an energy grid on the earth. Okay. But there are also ley lines, which are, they, they act kind of like, um, veins and arteries. 
in for the Earth. Uh oh. And so I they are positive froze. and negative ley lines. Okay. Veins and arteries are. Um, Apparently, there's something wrong I'm, with the I'm, grid. Because <laughs> why? You froze and I can't hear you. Oh well, that's a problem. But I, nobody else is going to have that problem. I think she just popped off her energy. Her in, internet so, energy. Listen to me. <laughs> she she just popped off I'm the right internet. Here. Can you not hear me? I'm right here. And she shall be I'm back right shortly so can... <laughs> to talk and about the I energy grid. I am still grid. here talking to you. I can hear now you. Now we're not talking about the energy grid like that. You know, oh you turn God, on the light talking. switch and the light comes on. We're talking about the energy, energy. And that grid. Yeah, I don't think you can hear and me. And I have no clue where she's going to go, guys. So y'all just, I'm here. you know. I'm right here. I'm looking buckle at you up, and I can Go hear with you. the flow. Go down the rabbit hole me. and let's see where we pop up. Because eventually we're going to pop no, up somewhere. I just, just don't know where. Clearly we just don't. Still waiting on her. Maybe I popped off. I don't think I did. Nope, I'm still there. I just don't know where she is. Okay, now she officially popped off. <laughs> so, Chris, you're going to have to do a little editing on this. <laughs> Sorry about that. And coming right down yeah. the aisle into the stadium packed with people is Kelly Sparta. Rah! There she is. She's back with us, folks. The sad part is I could hear you the whole time and I was talking the whole time and I was just watching you talk about how I wasn't here. So this will be entertaining on the, on you, the editing side for Chris. Yeah, so, yeah. I'm like, Chris, I'm sorry. What was the last you thing froze you like because I was talking the whole time. So what was, what was the last thing nothing, nothing after, well, it's an energy grid, but not an energy grid. And then you went and then oh, that's how you froze. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so there's something missing from the title, which is the ley lines. Um, so there is an energy grid uh, on the uh, for the planet, just like there's an energy grid for anything. Uh, but uh, there's also the ley lines. So the ley lines work like uh, veins and arteries do in the body. So uh, the positive ley lines are bringing positive energy out into the world. And the negative ley lines are bringing in all the crap back to the back to be uh, composted, right? So, so that's the there's a circulation system, right? And um, it works much like veins and arteries in the body do. One goes in one direction, one goes in the other, right? And um, so, when you are looking at any property, you have to look at the ley lines. And we did an entire episode on ley lines, so I'm not going to go deep into this on, on here because we've already done an episode on that, so go find that if that's in exciting for you. Um, but we're going to talk about the energy grid and the vortexes or vortices and the earth chakras um, and where those exist and whatnot. So uh, think of the earth as a person. I mean, it's not really a person, but it has chakras much like a person has chakras. And so, uh, you know, those chakras actually, one of the things that, that was happening in the 2012 era is that the chakras were moving. And that was actually part of some of the magnetic pole shift that's been happening. And so, uh, you know, like uh, the... Um, I can't remember where everything is. You're going to have to go look it up on Google. I don't remember where they all are. But one of the chakras moved from Tibet to, I think, Brazil in that time frame. And so as the magnetic poles shift, uh, the energies of the body of the Earth realign, and therefore the chakras move because the energy system of the earth is tied into the magnetic fields, magnetic poles. Okay. And so when the magnetic poles shift, the chakras shift. And so that's probably okay. going to continue because according to my research, uh, you know, all of, you know, the things that I've just happened to come across, not, I don't do deep research. Um, the, 
the things I've come across uh, say that the magnetic poles are still in flux and could shift dramatically at any moment. Um, and so, you know, the, the chakra system of the Earth is going to be shifting, you know, it probably shifts on an ongoing basis, honestly. But so the chakras are where you can go to have different experiences of those energies, right? So if you're in the earth second chakra, then you'll be in your creative center and your sexuality, sensuality center and your passion center, you know, all of that. And so, you know, if you are looking to really activate a particular chakra for yourself or a particular aspect of yourself, going to the place on the earth that that chakra is in that moment is one of the best ways to tap into that energy in a, at a larger scale than yourself, right? And so there's that. Now, energy vortex, vortexes or vortices, depending on whether you're doing English or plural or Latin plural, uh, is those are where the earth has more energy than in other places. And so the, the place most people think about with this is Sedona, Arizona, right? Because they've got all sorts of different energy vortexes there. And uh, so, you know, it's just a place where the energy is higher than the, it is elsewhere. Now, when I went to Sedona with a friend of mine in 1998, um, I did not experience a huge difference in energy in any of the vortexes that we visited. Um, but, I mean, it, there was more energy, but it didn't feel significant to me, right? Because I was comparing it to the energy that the five of us who were in circle at the time would raise just between the five of us. And I was comparing it to the energy vortex and saying, oh, well, you know, at least it should be that much. It's the whole earth, right? And it was not nearly as much energy as the five of us would raise. Now, if the five of us had been there to raise energy in the vortex, would that have been amazing? Yes, okay, <laughs> because we would have been accessing that energy and, and, and you know, improving that energy and whatever. But, um, you know, so don't have huge expectations is what I'm saying um, if you go to visit these things. Some people have amazing experiences. I was not one of those people, so... Uh, it, it may depend on the person and whether or not the vortex speaks to them and, and it, you know, or it could just be that different vortexes have different levels. I didn't go out to all of them. I only went to two or three. So, um, but, uh, yeah, so, but an, a vortex can show up in a variety of different places and in a variety of, variety of different ways, right? So uh, the vortexes in Sedona are naturally formed vortexes, and those, those are pretty big, right? But I've also seen energy vortexes in people's houses, and mm -hmm. those, can, <laughs> those can be problematic. <laughs> they can be problematic. They can be interesting, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, you know, they're, they're bringing energy in. And if you have your house warded, it's going to skip right through the vortex. You know, vortex is going to, going to let things in that your wards are not going to touch unless you put it specifically over the vortex and make sure that that's included in the ward. If you don't know the vortex is there and you, you know, you could have a reason why your wards aren't working. Um, so there are vortexes and then there are portals. And, you know, those are different for warding purposes. We're not going to talk about portals today, but the vortexes are bringing in energy. Now, um, you can also connect vortexes to energetics on the astral. That's a whole nother thing. Please don't do that. And if you don't know what you're doing, it's a good way to screw yourself up and hurt yourself and other people. So please don't do that. Uh, uh, I actually learned something about that from Kathy recently that I didn't know and I would have hurt something if I had done it the way I had planned. So, you know, cause she's actually worked with it and I haven't. So, uh, you know, when I tell you, please don't do it, you'll hurt yourself. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm serious. So the, when we're looking at vortexes, it's, it's simply just adding energy, 
Okay, that's the, the thing about a vortex is that it's, it's a higher energy state because it's pulling energy in from somewhere else. Okay. Now what, where that somewhere else is, is different based on the vortex and you know, all the things, but yes. Now, so we've covered chakras and we've covered vortexes. Now I want to talk about the energy grid. Okay. Because every structure in, on, on the physical has an energy grid associated with it. And so, uh, the, you know, a building, the earth, you know, any, any major structure is going to have an energy grid and that energy grid is how the energy flows through the structure. And so when you're dealing with the energy grid of the earth, you're dealing with things like how does the earth clear its own energy field? How does it uh, move energy through its surface? How does it, uh, where do things get bound up, right? So it's, it's, how do I equate this to a person? Um, I mean, it's kind of like the aura, but there's more structure to it than an aura has, okay? So it, you can look at the energy grid of a space so for instance, years and years ago, I was at a, uh, I was in a bay in, I don't know, somewhere on the East Coast, I don't remember, probably somewhere in Rhode Island, I think. But I was at a bay in Rhode Island and the energy was just awful. I mean, it's just stuck and awful. And I was sitting there going, wow, this is not right. This is not what a natural space should feel like, right? Something had gummed up the energy in that grid of in the part of that part of the grid. And so I started working with the energy of the grid and the water and moving that energy through and allowing the negative energy to clear and bringing in positive energy and getting just getting things moving and it had gotten gummed up, right? And then mm -hmm. once I did that, the energy of the entire bay started to clear. And once it was moving, it was self-sustaining after that. I didn't have to complete the process. The process completed itself, right? Because the, the grid is meant to have movement through it. Does that make sense? Yes. She's just... Yeah. Well, yeah, because if the... Okay. If, if, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if the Earth has energy moving, we as beings have energy moving... It, to me, it makes complete sense that the things would have energy moving also. Right. Yes. And so that's the situation. So when something feels... Okay, so I'm going to try and define this for you guys very clearly so that you're not confusing it with other things. So you can be on land and have it feel icky. Um and the icky could be re residue from some nastiness that happened on the land. It could be icky in the form of their entities on the land. It could be icky uh, in the form of you are not welcome on the land because you've crossed over a ward and you're like feeling that, but that will also feel sort of aggressive, mm. right? It can the the energy that i'm talking about is not aggressive it is not threatening it is not something that makes you go Wah! i'm afraid right if you're afraid then that is okay. not a, a block in an energy grid okay that is something on the land that or you know it, it, whether it is an energetic or a person or an entity that is being threatening towards you if you're dealing with something that is an energy grid issue, it will feel stuck and wrong. You know, it'll feel like, oh, this is not what this is supposed to be. Not wrong is in a, you know, dangerous wrong or a, you know, supernatural wrong. It'll feel just like something ain't right here, right? And it'll feel stuck. Like stale. And so... Yeah, exactly. Stale, like stagnant, right? There's no flow, right? 
Yeah. And so when that is what's happening, that's when it's an energy grid issue. And that's when simply just doing some work to move the energy through the grid. I mean, I've run across an energy grid issue maybe twice in my life. Okay. So they're not common, but you know, especially with climate change and all the stuff that's going on, I'm, you know, my gut is that it's happening more often now than it was back in the day. Right. Just because there's too, there's so much stuff that's messing with the, this system. Right. And the, the change in temperature and the melting ice caps and all the stuff is just shifting things in the system enough and the moving of the, the, the poles, the uh, magnetic poles, all of this is gonna, it, it creates dis-ease in the system, right? And we know when there is dis-ease in the energetic system, there can be disease mm -hmm. in, the, in the body and uh, in the, the energetic grid will reflect that. And so, you know, what we're looking to do is if we run into these things in these places to, uh, you know, help to shift that energy. Okay. So, okay. you know, this is, um, this is a service that you can do for the world. If you happen to find it, you know, I, I wouldn't recommend going looking for it because it's a big world <laughs> and, and, you know, there's small places where this is a problem, right? But if you happen mm -hmm. upon it, then it's a service you can do that doesn't require a huge amount of effort to do and is beneficial to the planet, right? Um, you know, if you want to be beneficial to the planet right now, in general, I would say don't take all the negative crap and ground it into the earth right now. She's got enough of her own stuff to deal with. She doesn't need ours too. So I would take the crap and cleanse it before I ground it because she's got her own stuff, right? So how do we cleanse before we ground, right? So th let's ask that question because that's relevant, right? So let's talk about what's the difference there between cleansing and grounding. So cleansing is the transmutation of the energy that is the stuff you're trying to get rid of, right? So if you've got anger or upset or ick or sickness or, uh, you know, sadness or grief or, you know, any, anything that you're trying to let go of, right? or that you pull off of a client mm -hmm. if you're working as a healer, right? Anything like that, if you're trying to, to pull it out, then it needs to be transmuted before it is grounded. So the transmutation process is very simple. It's just taking off the predominant emotion from the energy before grounding the energy. And so, okay. you know, it's, it, and, and it's not even taking, taking off is probably the wrong word. It's, it's more like, um, shifting the predominant energy because it's all different vibrations, right? So you don't have to take anything away. You don't have to move anything or, you know, and you just, you're like, okay, I pulled all of this grief, let's say grief, because I've been mm -hmm. hearing mm -hmm. a lot been running into a lot of people who are losing family members recently. So, um, let's, let's mm -hmm. use grief as an example. And so you, let's say you pull a lot of grief out of someone or you release a lot of your own grief into your room mm -hmm. as you're, you're grieving. And now you want to clear your space, right? So you've got all of this grief energy in the room, but you don't want to hand mother earth grief right now. She's got enough grief, right? So what okay. you do instead is you gather the energy up and you just shift the energy. You add a little bit of your energy into the mix to shift the energy to neutral. So the energy of grief is very slow and heavy, right? And yes. it has this sort of energy of waves. It comes in waves. It comes and goes, right? Mm -hmm. And so you tune into that energetic that you've got. And what you're going to do is you're just going to just take a little bit of effort on your part and just shift it to neutral. 
before you ground it. And be like, okay, okay this, this is this is heavy and and weighty and energy, and now it's going to be neutral energy, and I'm just going to and shift it to neutral before I ground it. Okay. Then you're okay. not having to get rid of any dominant emotion. You're not having to do anything with the emotion. You're just shifting the vibration, the quality of the vibration of okay. the energy that is in your space to something else, right? And so you can do that. Now, why would I still ground it once I've already transmuted it, which I'm hearing somebody ask that question, so you're welcome. Uh, the, the reason that I would do that is because there can be echoes of the, if you're, if you're not totally perfect with it, there can be echoes of the original vibration that because it's your emotion, you might pull back into being uh, as the original emotion because you were connected to it first. So I would still ground right. that energy um, for that reason. And because if you're pulling it off of somebody else, then there could be echoes of their energy within that. And just because you've changed the predominant energy of the, the uh, energy ball that you have to a neutral space doesn't mean that their energy signature isn't still sort of, um, you know, subtly in there. And you don't want to take on yeah. that, right? Because it can come with other things. Because especially because we're empaths, if there's an echo of their energetic in there and we tap into that, then we might just tap directly into them and then we might pull a little more of their crap in and we don't want to be doing that. So that's why you ground it, even though you've cleared it. Mm -mm. Okay? You're not my bull, not my pasture. Energy, therefore, you're giving neutral energy to Mother Earth and you're still giving her 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 energy to compost and to work with but you're not giving her the crap that goes along with it right so yeah you know when we're working with mother earth there's there's a lot of different pieces and parts to consider and especially when there is major stuff happening on the land which there almost always is uh, you know, somewhere in the world, somebody is committing genocide uh, pretty much all the time. Somewhere in the world, you know, people are dying in a needless war almost all the time, right? There's somewhere in the world, there's famine. Somewhere in the world, there's there's sickness. Somewhere in the world, you know, so there's always this stuff on the land, always. And so, um, you know, you want to be as kind as possible to her because she's, living with all of this and then there's you know the pollution and the things that we do that damage the land and you know strip mining and you know killing the amazon forest and you know cutting it down and whatever i mean we're terrible we're terrible for the earth we are a disease on the earth and she is going to mm -hmm. eradicate us if we don't cut this shit out right <laughs> you know it's just, just she's like mm, when it hits too much i'm just gonna have enough hurricanes and enough ice age and you know anything else that i need to do to just wipe out the the infestation that's causing these problems because we are the infestation right so let's keep that in mind when we think about doing things that the earth doesn't like remember what happened to the dinosaurs yeah <laughs> she wiped them out <laughs> yeah. no actually that was that was something else but <laughs> If I remember, that was a meteor, right? I'm pretty sure it was a meteor. Yeah. So, big ass meteor. Yes, but what caused so, the meteor? But um, mm. yeah, maybe she called it in. Maybe she just amplified that magnetic field and pulled that pulled it in with gravity. There you go. I'm just saying. Maybe she sent the. I'm just email. saying. She's. A, that's her, hey. She's a powerful bitch, being. Man. That's who she is. That's it. Mm. Yeah. Don't want to mess with her. So, yeah. yeah mm -mm. We got a little far afield on this one. We started off a little far afield, so I don't know why we're surprised. Yeah. It was so bad that I got it's all kicked right. off and didn't even know it. And I was listening to you talk and didn't even know it. So, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, it's like that. Anyway. So. Yeah. It's so, all right. I, I want to just say this, right? I want to just say this because it's so... When you get started in your spiritual work, one of the first things that you want to do is save the world. And 
that's because we all have a common mission to uplevel the planet. Okay, we're, we're already in this space. And so inherently, it's in our beingness to want to do this. But I see it twisted a lot to, oh, I'm going to kill myself to make sure the planet is better. I'm going to spend all my time working on this. I'm going to, you know, um, dedicate myself to making Mother Earth better and all of this stuff. One person cannot do that. I don't care how much energy you're running. You are one out of eight, almost eight billion people on the planet. And mm -hmm. we are teeny tiny compared to the earth. It is ego folly to think that you can have an impact by yourself. Okay. So why do we do this? Because if we all do this, then it has an impact right? Mm -hmm. That's why we do it. And so I would say, don't get overly attached to this idea of healing the earth, because that is an ego folly piece there. You, you are one person and one person is not going to be able to accomplish that. Now, could you have a section of the earth that is yours to work on? You know, you have X amount of land that you feel like you are curating and that's yours to do. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely something that a single person could do. But to say I am healing the earth is, yeah. I mean, I don't think if, even if you spent an entire lifetime trying to do it, there, there would be, you would not have enough time or days or energy to be able to make, to move yeah. the needle enough to make it worthwhile. Right. So just, just try not to overblow what you're doing, right? I would much rather you spend your time really focused on clearing your own limiting beliefs and, and opening up your own power centers and being able to clear your own energy field and tapping into the ability to connect with others and, you know, work in unison. I would so much rather you do that then try and do something like this because that's a resistance trying to do something that is too big for one person to do and trying to do it all yourself mm -hmm. or even to, you know, say, this is what I'm doing and then other people will do it too and it'll be okay. It, it, it's just, it's so, the scale is so big and having, having traveled to 14 different countries, I really get how big the world is right because i have traveled hours and 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 still only gotten about a quarter a quarter of the way around the world right um <laughs> or, or maybe halfway but not even not even half right so the world is massive and that was in one circumference right that was not the totality of the earth right there's just it's so big so, you know, stay away from trying to do things at that scale, because unless you're working with a very large group of people who are very focused and you're working in smaller groups that are connected together into bigger groups, you really don't have a chance of, of having an impact at that scale. Right now, mm -hmm. you, you can do a lot for yourself, right? But the, the larger scale stuff you've got to let happen. Now, some people are going to be saying, oh, well, you talked about the TikTok witches having an impact on the whole world. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, but not really. Okay. They started a cascade that had an impact on the world. That was different. And if you don't know what that's about, you can go find the episode on the TikTok witches, uh, the baby yeah. witches on TikTok. But um, they, they started a cascade that went across thousands of tens of thousands of people and cascaded back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and eventually amplified to the point where it did have an impact on the whole planet, but they did not do that by themselves. Okay. They just started a stupidity no. that continued. Right. So that's, that's not the same thing. Okay. All right. And, and if I remember so, correctly, but it not, but it not for the power of the moon and its enormous energy would have never happened, really. 
So it's not right. their individual yes. power. It was the power of the things that they set in motion that then were amplified uh, by those those things. No, the moon did not amplify anything. The moon <laughs> reflected things. Reflected the moon it. Reflected okay. Things. Right. So the moon reflected things and then the, the reflection came back down and hit everybody's defenses who have amplifiers in their defensive fields and who or who have reflectors in their defensive fields. OK, and because they got hit. I got the you. Attack, their amplifiers went off and a lot of people have 10x amplifiers or 3x amplifiers. And so whatever they got hit with, they amplified three or 10 times automatically and sent it back out to the moon that reflected it back again. And it went back and forth amplifying each time. That was the amplifier. Okay. Yeah. The amplifier was in. The, I, had, I had it backwards. The, the fields <laughs> of those who have energetics that are amplified. This is one of the reasons why I don't amplify attacks. Is because you don't know where it's going to end up. You know, I just, I'm like, nope, you can have it back, right? Yeah. I, I actually have stopped amplifying at all. I've stopped reflecting at all. I just steal the energy. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you want to attack me? Okay, I'll just steal that energy. <laughs> I'll take the attack off of it and I'll just steal the energy. Thank you for the energy. I will take that and use it for my own benefit, right? So that's that's part of the deal there. So, you know. Everybody has their own way of doing it. But if you're going to throw an attack at me, I'm going to keep the energy because, you know, you would tell the trouble of throwing the attack. Why should I not? Right. <laughs> something should come out of it. I'm going to get something good out of Thank it. You. Thank you. So something. <laughs> yeah. Transmute that energy. You. You, got what, you got what you started with, you know. So, yeah, it's like that. Anyway. So, yeah, that's that, that that's sort of the energy thing for for the earth right now and so it, when you're thinking about doing work with the earth keep in mind that she is overtaxed so try not to add to her overtaxedness right it's like when mom was at the end of her ability to cope with you you did not mess with mom right think of it that way mm -hmm. so uh, and and what i'm going to say is i want to say thank you because I just got my, my 2023 notes from Spotify and they said that a lot of you have been sharing the podcast via text, via social media links, via direct link. Thank you so much. We so appreciate you for all That's of awesome. the ways in which you are supporting us and, and helping us to be heard more. Um, and I just want to acknowledge that and say thank you from the bottom of my heart for that, because, you know, the, we put a lot of work into these episodes and it takes a lot of time to do that. And, and, you know, seeing it being shared and seeing, you know, having people download multiple episodes and, you know, they even told me how many people were, we were their top podcast or their top five or their top 10. And, oh. you know, there's, there's a lot. And thank you. Thank you for being that person, if that's you. Um, and we, we've been trending in the Netherlands, too. So if you're in the Netherlands, say hi, because I want to know who in the Netherlands has been listening so much, because we have been trending in the Netherlands and charting awesome. in the Netherlands for some time. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, guys, it's awesome. And I, I don't know if you've been on my social media, but... If you go into the, the Spirit Sherpa by Kelly Sparta Facebook group, uh, I posted a map of all of the places that our podcast has been downloaded. And you can see the map of the 147 countries around the world that we have been heard in. And it's really cool to look at. So it's also on my regular That's feed neat. and on the channel, but it's, we, I, I have a lot of other posts in there. So it might be harder to find cause I posted it like a week or two ago, but, um, but yeah, that's, it's fun. It's fun to look at that map. And, uh, so join the spirit Sherpa by Facebook, Kelly, by Kelly Sparta Facebook group. Yeah, I can talk, uh, and, and, uh, come in and, and check it out. You also get a chance to talk to all of the, ho all of the guests who've been on the show. They're all in the group. Uh, and so you can reach out and ask some questions if there's anything you want. Well, not all of them, but a lot of them are in the group. 
Um, and you can reach out and ask questions, and they're happy to answer them for you. So, uh, And you can talk to some other people who are listening. And, of course, as always, if you have an idea for an episode, we desperately want to hear it because after five and a half years, the topic ideas are getting a little thin over here. Um, so I would love to hear any ideas that you guys have for a topic for the podcast uh, or even for a series. I mean, I'd be happy to get an idea for a series because that makes life even easier. We'd love mm -hmm. to do series here. As you well know, we've done the chakras. We've done the seven deadly sins and virtues. We've done the wheel of the year. We've done, oh, we're working on an energy healing one right now. We've done spiritual entrepreneur stuff. Mm -hmm. We've done becoming a light worker stuff. We've done, I, I don't even know. We've done a lot of, lot of different series. And so... We, w we love to get a new series in place so that we can have some stuff to talk about on a regular basis. So we would love to have some advice from you on that and ideas of what you'd like to learn about. So uh, with that said, subscribe, like, share, and you guys are rocking it out on that one. And uh, I think that's it for today. Oh, you, know, you want a Kellyism, don't you? That's it. Um, let me see. Let me think. Um, Kellyism. If, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. Mother That's Earth, right. So case. watch how you treat mama. <laughs> yes. That's it. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all that we have time for this week, folks. Tune in next time when Kelly adds another chapter into your guide to energy, magic, and the spirit world. I'm Jules, here with Kelly, Sparta, and you have been listening to Spirit Sherpa. All right, y'all. So long. <laughs> Bye.